One of the things I used to do, like to do when I was a kid is we would take snails out and we'd put them in jars or put them in boxes. And when they come out like that, they look very bright and curious. If you gently touch the antenna, they'll recoil. See, they just kind of shrink it back up inside. They retract their antenna Welcome back into the explorers. body. I'm glad you can join us today. Today, we're going to learn a little bit about animals and how scientists use different ways of studying animals in the wild. Some of these activities are things that you can do in your own backyard and learn how the scientists do it for real. Too bad you have a broken leg, said Maxie, his little mouse friend, who was reading books with the boy for the whole morning. Oh, you mean THE Maxine, the famous artist, exclaimed Mike. Sure, you can have it. It's awesome material. Maybe we could do some science experiments with it. Maxie went straight to the beautiful garden to the south of the castle, which was blossoming and blooming with all kinds of flowers. Oh, I love that hat, said the mouse girl, reaching for Maxie's head. Puss was sent by the evil Dr. D to spy on Mike and Maxie. He wants the cat to catch the mouse and bring it into his secret cage in the woods of Science Castle. The little mice were running for their lives, but the cat was right behind them. Then he realized what had happened. Dr. Evil's mean cat just kidnapped his girlfriend. What do I do now? I need to find Maxine and rescue her from that awful cat. But how? <clears throat> Check the ground. It's still moist outside from the last few days of rain. You should see the footprints of the cat. Can you see any? He could clearly see some bite marks from a mouse and a bird. Are you a talking earthworm? The mouse asked in disbelief. The earthworm was nodding. Oh, how I wish Mike was here. He's really good at identifying animal tracks, muttered the mouse. And that's the end of our story. <clears throat> we have another problem we have to solve. So let's do some science experiments to try to figure out what are the ways that we can bring animal tracks back home and study them to try and figure out who was the there. first thing I'm going to do in your science kits you got this animal wheel the spider lives in a spider web so that's a fun little game that you can play when you want to do some science activities and then we've got one full one tip the cup at an angle and slowly pour it in and you want to pour it carefully so that you don't disturb the animal track and change the shape of it. See a little bit but the paws, the toes of the dog. This is not a small to medium sized dog. So that's one of the th ways that scientists will study animals out in the wild. But scientists are really good at knowing the animals that they study will be able to identify the type of bird by looking at the footprint that it makes. And what it will do is will drive the animals who live in the dirt down towards the ground, the artificial ground that you've created, the dirt, the dark environment in the jar underneath. You've got a little magnifying lens that comes with your science kit that works pretty good. You can use that to zoom in and look up close. A lot of the bugs that you'll see are actually really tiny. This nice little magnifying lens fits perfectly over the jar. It gives you a perfect little laboratory for observing the insects that, that, may, that may crawl into there. So in this particular experiment, what we're doing is putting a little slice of apple. But did you know that earthworms make noise? We don't really call it talking. But if you do that, you need to be very careful so that you don't squeeze the earthworm. Now, I prefer to use my fingers because I like the way earthworms feel. When you put them on a piece of paper, you can actually hear the sounds that they make. And when you put them on a piece of paper... Oh, yeah. You can hear them make scratching sounds. It's a, an environment for the worms to live in so that we can observe them. But here's an example of a terrarium that was built earlier. It's got bits of dead leaves in there. Where are our worms? Oh, here's one right here. It really is a neat thing to watch a worm digging its way into the dirt. And this little terrarium gives you an opportunity to observe the worms doing that. When you can see them from the outside, and see what their foot, this part here is called the foot. These are some examples of pine cones that we collected that animals have eaten off of. You can see the pine cone's not all there. This, would, this is an example of what we would call animal sign. Scientists who specialize in s studying specific species of birds recognize the bird 
by looking at the feather. So that's a really important way that scientists look to find out what kinds of animal species are living in a certain habitat. You can learn a lot about a spider by the type of web that it weaves and gently spray the spider web with water. Water will collect. Oh look, the spider came out to see what's going on. And just thread it through your holes and try and web, weave or knit a spider web. Now you can easily break a spider web, but most insects can't and that's why it works so well as a trap. Scientists who study spiders have learned how to identify a spider, even if there's no spider in the web, just by the type well, of web. Let's revisit Mike and Maxie and see how they solve the problem. Did you have any ideas? I bet you had some ideas about what Maxie can do to try and bring animal tracks back to Mike, who's laying in bed with the cast on his broken leg.